I'm gonna go through every single one of my cars that I have, my project cars. These are all mine and my wife's. I'm gonna give you some basic information about the car and some of the details about it. And why not start off with the 2009 Audi R8? And what a car. This is the car that I've been wanting for a while that I kept my mouth hushed for a long time. It was one of those personal goals that I've always wanted to have. And my first personal goal was my Datsun 510. My second one was my RX-7, which I ended up getting. And then this was like one of my top, top goals was to own an exotic. And it finally happened. I've owned it for a few weeks now. I would say about a month. It does not disappoint. The car has power. The car is extremely sexy in the inside. The car is also the gated six. The leather is extremely soft. The all-wheel drive system in this car is superb. I mean, you have an engine in the back seat of the car, come on. It doesn't get any better than that. The car is completely stock other than the exhaust system. But other than that, this is how the car comes from manufacturer and what a car. The lines, it's just everything about this car is just extremely sexy. The brakes are huge front and back. This is the V8, not the V10. And I'm, I mean, I'm extremely, extremely happy with this car. Don't know what to say other than this is my overall best car that I own. And I'm super, super happy with it. I'm glad I got it. It's a pretty much a brand new car. It only has 40,000 miles for being an 09. That's extremely good. Well, enough talk about this one. Let's just start the car up. <laughs> a rumble and when you are inside the car you don't you barely hear anything coming out of this car but outside the next car I'm going to show you is my 1994 Mazda RX-7 this is honestly my first dream car this is one of those ones that I thought that I was never going to be able to reach and after hard work and flipping, actually I got this car flipping cars. Started buying cheap cars, doing basic mods on it, flipping them for more money. And then eventually I saved enough money to buy this car. So flipping cars is a good business to get into if you know what you're doing. The car actually came with a lot of stuff already in it. It came with the stop stack, big brakes in the front. It came with uh, race wheels, not this one. It came with different set of wheels. It came with a full vertex, uh, USA kit. These are real Vertex hood. First thing I did was change the interior because the interior was completely tan and I ended up doing uh, black and red interiors. I love red seats. Oh, and I did a red carpet as well. Of course, I got the limited edition TJ Hunt slash throttle with sparkle combination. Definitely my favorite wheel. The car is equipped with uh, Power FC for an ECU. That's an old school Alpine deck. This is a grazing super short shifter, which is probably the shortest shifter you can find for, in, for any RX-7. It has a turbo timer that I've never used. Of course, my Puerto Rican flag cannot, cannot be missed. I always have that in a lot of my cars. Some of the cars don't have an ashes because I ran out of them. I only, I only had so many of them. Put a fuel pressure gauge on this one because when you go down a fuel pressure on an FD that has close to 500 horsepower, then you're gonna be in big trouble. So my Power FC doesn't have any safety features and it's fine because that's the way I like it. I'm my own safety feature. I'm always looking at my gauges. If I know I'm dropping fuel pressure, I let go of the gas. If my boost or my vacuum is off, I let go of the gas. And if my white band, my air and fuel make sure it's not correct, I let go of the gas. Uh, so far, knock on wood, that motor's been in that car for over eight years on this build so the previous owner had already had it for a few years and then i bought it and he had it with 300 and something horsepower and i ended up going up to close to 500 horsepower now and the car's been nothing but flawless the car's running and it starts every time i have no issues with it this car's actually sitting on an airbag system so this was an Air Force suspension, which is from, oof, probably, Air Force suspension came out many, many, many years ago, probably 10, 15 years ago. And the previous owner ended up buying that suspension. That suspension took a crap. The only thing that's left from there is this tank and the bags. The bags are, and these bags are actually cracked. They're bad. I need to replace them. And I have a whole brand new set from UAS that I need to install in this car, which by the way, I, I need to do it soon. So shout out to UAS, uh, Universal Air Suspension, 
for hooking it up with this, those airbags, which I'm gonna be installing soon. Never had an issue with this airbag system. It's pretty, it's simple. A tank, two pumps, and there's two switches in the glove compartment that you can control them up and down. As you guys can see back here, I ended up extending the exactly five inches because, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's, all this is burnt from the last one that I did. The car, once it hit nearly 500 horsepower, started throwing a lot of flames out the back of the exhaust. And from the, from the dyno to my house, it literally melted this whole area. So we ended up, I tried to do my best by buffing it and cleaning it as much as I could and right away I needed to extend it these five inches. That's why it says no smoking within 50 feet. There's nothing but raw fuel coming out of there. That's an universal uh, strut bar. And the strut bar, they, they don't sell one for the FD. You just have to buy the smallest one you can. And I ended up fabricate, custom making it for this car. And just go under the hood. All right, so under the hood, as you can see, this is a Grady front mount intercooler for the FD, which a lot of people like myself it's been modded to put it as a V mount. I added a different blow valve. This used to buy, this used to have the HKS blow valve, and now it has the Synapse R55 blow valve. It also has auto meter, fuel pressure regulator. It has aftermarket injectors, and it has a T66 turbo on it. Uh, AC deletes. Uh, my oil catch can is where the AC compressor will be at. Uh, and of course, I have the light, lightweight pulleys in the front. The only thing I don't have the bearing because the bearing by itself is more than all the pulleys put together. And I'm not about that. I'm not about that life. I'm not about lightweight, but come on. Uh, I do have the HKS adjustable whiskey, HKS the turbo manifold, and then all the way back is HKS. Everything in this car is HKS pretty much. And this car, when I bought this car, it came with a T04Z. Uh, turbo from HKS. I literally the bearings fell out of the damn turbo that I beat that turbo when we went from 300 to 500. I don't think that turbo was used to it and bad juju. That thing said bye bye day one. So, which to be honest, the T04Z will spool way quicker than the T56, but the T56 on the freeway uh, works better. Uh, you, you gain more out of it. And then of course we have my custom, not custom, but my adjustable electronic uh, boost regulator. It Inside in the engine, this thing has a half bridge port and some people like it, some people don't. Uh, I love it, I love the half bridge. Uh, let me start it off for you. to show you my cup holder. If these don't come with cup holder, so I ended up making this myself and it works perfect. Woo! All right guys, the next car I'm gonna show you is gonna be my wife's RX-7 FD. This is a 1993 Mazda RX-7 R1. It came with the sway seats. It came a little bit lighter than the other RX-7s. It came with the dual oil cooler system. This car is actually sitting on the race wheels that my car came in when I first bought it. So they're 18 by nine and a half, I believe, and it's sitting on 265s in the back and 215s in the front. And also has the naughty steering wheel that came on the steering wheels in Japan. This car was literally bought extremely cheap and it was for a reason. And it came in box. It's literally like building an Ikea furniture. We bought the car, we put it on the, on the, on the trailer and then there was boxes and boxes that came with it. It was, com it was super incomplete. When we started building this car for, for my wife, uh, Black Sheep Rotor, if you guys wanna see her page. It took a lot of work and a lot of our friends came together at the shop and they started just donating parts so we can try to finish this thing. We kept the pop-up headlights. The paint job was done by Mako in Temecula, California. And they did a really good job with this. This car and I know a lot of people talk crap about makeup paint job but they actually did an excellent job on this one and there's also a video on this paint job uh, which we're gonna put in the description below we I did the same cup holder that I did in my FD I did for her we actually hit the gauges down here so there's the here's the wide band gauge and then that's the boost case that I was put in the car and then that's a voltmeter this car actually has Bluetooth system and upgraded sound system and it sounds excellent also for ECU we have another electronic ECU for this car which actually came with the car believe it or not and it has an HKS system and HKS cat back exhaust that 
it literally broke inside. So when you set it up, it sounds like a rattle can because the inside of the exhaust system is completely apart. So that's one of the, I already have the exhaust system here for me to replace it. This is a titanium hood prop from Alpha Garage. That thing is sick, dude. That's probably one of my best mods from this car. You cannot forget the downstart hardware that we have here. We have the uh, downstart hardware washers. And you see that tilt one, we have purple one. This car is completely equipped with color from Downstar Hardware. So thank you, Frank. Mickey ended up donating this intercooler for Helen so we can do the V-mount and DNA Garage came along and was and told us to drop the car off at DNA, which we did. And we also ended up getting the underdrive pulleys, which Mickey also donated. We got k and filters for the turbo, which in reality, there's pipes that go over here and then it goes to a filtration system. But we ended up going with the shorty, which is literally just put the filters there. And I love the way they look. It took us a while to find the right size that would fit both of them. I ended up buying these, uh, these silicone hoses for coolant. All this paint was done by Rattle Can in the shop with 2K clear at the end. This is also resin uh, colors that uh, my wife chose to use. This is just a smaller battery with a bracket, uh, AM, uh, smart coils, like I said with the Adaptronic ECU, and obviously this car doesn't look like any other rotary out there. I mean, with these colors, people either love it or hate it. My wife doesn't care. This is what she loves. She loves colors. She, she has another car, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, and it also has different colors in it and I support her 100%. I actually love the car. I love the car, I love the, I like how, the way everything looks and the one thing that you don't see is the engine and the engine is actually wrinkle blue and it looks excellent. I love the way the engine looks. I just wish this thing would be open so you can actually enjoy the, the engine. It looks really, really, really dope. Uh, other than that, this thing is actually a stock engine. This is a built stock engine. So the previous owner told me that the engine was rebuilt, but stock, there was no ports or nothing on it. Um, so the engine is still the same way that he had it. He had it for about a few years, but never got it running right. And he ran out of money, obviously. this. People think that FD is something you just buy and it's like a Corolla, you can just put a few dollars in there and you can make it run uh, right away. FDs takes, they take all your money. They take a lot of money. You might as well buy an exotic car if you're gonna buy an FD because they drain you, they drain you. When you have two of them, it's even that much crazier. The harness that's in the car right now is a brand new harness from Mazda that Mickey also donated. So thank you, brother. Mickey's had help. Mickey, Throttle, DNA Garage, Top Star Hardware. Uh, I mean, Action Clutch donated the clutch. Uh, my buddy, John Jubaldi, he donated a lot of RX-7 parts for this thing. Um, well, Danny came through. A lot of friends, DNA Garage, Louie, and, and Miss DNA Garage donated the steering wheel for her. Like this thing was literally in boxes. It was pretty much a rolling chassis with just a bare block in here to run. Like I said, that exhaust sounds horrible. It's literally rattling inside. And it runs extremely good. With our boy uh, DK from Garage Life, he ended up turning this car with everything stopped with a non-sequential turbo at 300 horsepower. So it has 300 horsepower to the wheels. And when you drive this thing on the road, it is super, super fun to daily drive. I can literally daily drive this thing and not have any issues and have a smile on my face every day. All right guys, right behind me, I have my 1972 Mazda RX-2. You guys can see it's a two door. They came in two doors and they came in four doors. This one is probably one of my favorite cars that I have. And I drive this, this one very often. This one has a rebuilt 13B engine. It's actually a turbo two engine. It was built for turbo. And at one point this car was turbo. But the power, the power band was too high. This thing was extremely fast. And if anybody knows anything about RX2 or, or early models Mazda, their brakes are not good at all. They are horrible. So what I ended up doing, I ended up taking the turbo kit out and I ended up getting a Weber car by 48. And then that, the level of performance and brakes is actually perfect right now. And I love the way it drives. I love the way it sounds. It's sitting on coilovers. Uh, it also has a Cobra racing seat. Uh, and that's a wooden shifter. Somewhere I saw that I ended up putting many years ago and I just, it's been there ever since. Uh, automated gauges. 
I did buy, this is part of the Ricky Styles right here. So this car came with no gas pedal and it has a little bearing in it and I kind of like it because when you press on it, it goes down very smoothly so I, I don't want to put a gas pedal on. I really like the way it is and it's super smooth. I did buy these pads brand new but that was years ago and I still haven't put them on so I probably never will. Uh, I do have a cup holder because I always have to have it for my Coke can and I ended up getting a uh, rotary shaped one which is really sick. This steering wheel actually came out of the uh, Evo from the throttle shop, the one that we just gave away. So thank you throttle. Uh, that gauge been there forever in a day. Whenever you have a rotary you have to have a fire extinguisher. This car actually, I was one of those guys that I'm like, nah, I don't need one. And my buddy kept telling me, you need a fire extinguisher. And I'm like, nah, nah, I'm good. That same day, this car caught on fire. And guess who's who I call, I call my buddy. I'm like, yo, bring your fire extinguisher. My car's on fire. So ever since that day, all of my cars have a fire extinguisher. Only the rotary ones though. Uh, other than that, it still has the stock emblem, which is really rare. The paint needs some love. This is the car that I really want to restore, and I want this thing to look extremely well. I want this thing to be show quality when I drive it. The ultimate goal is to finish this body, make this thing look pristine, uh, and, and enjoy it and drive it. Those are Koenig Re Rewind? Koenig Rewind 15 by 70 offsets. And I ended up having somebody redraw them because the offset for this car is ridiculous. I believe it's four by one ten, and there's nothing out there that this that they'll have to fit. So I ended up buying the zero offsets and I ended up getting them redrilled by a company. We open up the hood, and like I said, we have the 13B, which is from a Turbo Two. And if you guys can see, it has a distributor plate in the front. This is from a GSLS. SE from a 1985 RX-7. So it has kind of like a little Frankenstein motor, uh, but the internals is all turbo too. This thing is prepped for turbo with new seals, big street port, two MSDs. The, this thing used to have two MSD 6ALs and I ended up taking it out. I don't remember why, but they need to go back on. I definitely need to reinstall this thing. I have them in a box somewhere. And then that's just a universal radiator that I'm picking up from eBay many, many years ago. This car was built probably, I wanna say seven years ago. Seven years ago was when I bought this car and then probably a year later the engine was built. That's where that number came from, 24. That is not a number that I like. I do not like two or four. It says that this car, that was the nickname of this car because when I first bought it, you couldn't go past 24 hours without this thing breaking down. I would be able to leave my house but I will never be able to return. Every time I leave my house, my wife used to tell me to hook up the trailer so she can tow me back. And that was a running joke, but no lie, every time I left, she had to tow me back. After that, after a year of dealing with 24 hours of this car, I ended up just, we ended up just pulling the car. We pulled the motor out and uh, the ports were horrible. I ended up buying uh, housings and end plates. The center plate was the only thing that was good out of this motor. Everything else had to be replaced. I ended up, uh, that's when I took the turbo kit out as well. We put the headers on it, and these from Atkins Rotary. These are really cool 90 degrees, or actually 180 degrees um, intake manifold for it, and it works excellent. Stop tech brakes all the way around, pads as well. It's sitting on coilovers. I believe they're type B, I'm not sure. It's something like that. I, I mean, I, I've had this thing for many years. I know they were really expensive. I think they were like $1,600 just for the coilovers. Another cool thing about this car is the rear window. The rear window goes up like all the way down and it goes all the way up, which is extremely rare for cars this old to have a full flip down window. Other than that, I think we should start the car so you guys can hear it. And she always starts right away. for this one let's go to the next one so this is my 1993 Suzuki Cappuccino after me and Mickey bought this car we ended up having actually we both have the same color and we ended up going the same style of wheels 
because honestly, these are the, the Mitsubishi Evo three wheels, and it's a perfect, perfect offset, perfect match. They're lightweight, and it's like the perfect combination for this car. Actually, a, uh, a common swap up in in Japan. It's very, very common to get those wheels. The paint is in great condition as you guys can see one of the first mods that i did was a cup holder because even though this thing is called a cappuccino after a drink these things came with no cup holder so that's one of the first things i did I put a cup holder and i ended up adding a boss amplifier that's a bluetooth receiver so it's it's for marine only well it's for marine only but i ended up putting it here so what it is it's a small amplifier and it's a Bluetooth receiver. So instead of having a stereo, I just have that controller. And as soon as I get in the car, when I started, my phone uh, links to it and I can play my music on my phone. I also ended up using JBL's uh, component systems in the rear and then I ended up doing the same thing in the front. So the tweeters up here have been replaced by JBL, the same thing with the speakers out there. And it sounds really, really good. Uh, the car ended up coming with a Momo steering wheel and a racing seat, which I have no idea what brand. And the uh, uh, the seat belts, the racing belts. Uh, this I ended up rerouting the correct way because it was all jacked up. The car has coilovers and it has an aftermarket exhaust, which it came like that from Japan. And let me just show you under the hood. So under the hood of the car, as you can see, it's got quite a few stuff done to it. A lot of it ended up being Monster Sport, and we have the, this is actually the intercooler piping, believe it or not, even though it's the same size as the radiator. Intercooler piping, it still has the stock intercooler, but it has an aftermarket adapter for a filter, HKS super sequential blow up all, aftermarket wiring, uh, spark plug wires, and it has a Cusco strut bar. The car also has a lightweight uh, underdrive pulley, and it has a silicone hoses for the cooling system. The car also has Monster Sport brake pads and uh, steel braided lines all the way around. So the car performs excellent, excellent. I beat the living crap out of it, and this thing is, is handling uh, what I'm doing to it. I, I am not planning on swapping this car. Even though it has a 0.6 liter engine, it has 64 horsepower. Uh, the car is 50-50 weight distribution. Probably the only car that comes with target top, uh, T-top, or full, full convertible. This thing actually falls all the way back and becomes a full convertible vehicle. But overall, I really, really love the way it is. I love the way the car moves. The car is so lightweight that the 64 horsepower feels like 175, to be honest. And this is probably the one that I drive the most. I love it. Out of all the cars, I drive this one the most because it's, it's really, really fun to drive, believe it or not. Next up, it's probably gonna be my favorite one. My 1972 Datsun 510. And 510 is one of those old school JDM cars that is probably the perfect classic to own. They're getting kind of pricey now. Uh, actually, they're getting really pricey. And just to own one and have it for so long, it's just, it, it means a lot to me. This is my first dream car that I wanted to own. Ever since I was a little kid, I've, been, I've always wanted a Datsun 510 and I've always wanted to do a rotary swap. I've had this thing for a long time and uh, it does have a racing B exhaust. Uh, it has 15 by 9 zero offset wheels. It has a little bit of flare in the body kit. It has a homemade carbon fiber wing that was built probably eight years ago. Uh, it has fiberglass fender, fiberglass front end, fiberglass member. I mean, everything in the front end is fiberglass. No, this is still metal, but everything else is fiberglass. Um, I love the patina of it. It tells a story and I like to keep it like this. Um, but I am planning on selling this one one. And if I do, I'm gonna fix all that. I wanna. I want to redo the body work, make it look nice. But uh, I mean, everything's been shaved. It's been shaved. The tail lights are in the inside, not on the outside. They're pretty much flush mounted. I want to seal all that up. The one thing I want to do, it's already been sound deadening like 10 years ago when I first got it. I did that and I never got a chance to do the carpet. So I am, I do want to do the carpet after I do the starlit carpet. And um, the interior is in really good shape. That bright seat is super comfortable. I'm never gonna get rid of it. It's got spark sparkle harness, everything else being redone, reupholstering leather to include the back seat. 
thought. And the headliner. So everything in here is looking, it's looking sharp. Once the paint is done and the carpet's in and that car, this car is gonna look amazing. This thing used to have all four, all four lights. I don't know why I took them out. I just decided to take them out and, and I ended up putting the chicken wire there. It does have an aftermarket aluminum radiator, which it keeps the rotary engine pretty cool. Uh, NRG steering wheel, which I got when I first got the car. And then it's got aftermarket gauge. It's got the auto meter uh, speedometer gauge there, which it works. It's got the fuel gauge, which in my case, if you see my previous video, this gauge is uh, backwards. So when it's show empty, it's actually full. And when it's full, it's actually empty. So be careful when you drive my car. The RPM, this is a V8 only RPM gauge that can fit in here. So this is actually a 12A rotary engine from a 1984 um, Mazda. But then if you see the house and you see how it has the old school logo, the plates are actually from a probably 70s rotary engine. And they were completely polished. They've been street ported. I mean, this thing 13 years ago looked amazing. Here's your aftermarket radiator, which it works great with this engine. And the oil cooler that most of our engines have, or actually all of our engines have a really big oil cooler. Uh, Holly, this is the Holly 550. It's a little bit smaller than the one in the Miata, just because this is a 12A. And it's also being built by Racing Beat, specifically made for this engine. And like I said, the way it's set up, I have not touched this engine in 10 years. This gasket in between is the one that went bad that I replaced, that was $6. One alternator since I've owned it in the last 10 years and one fuel pump since I own it. Other than that, I haven't even done brakes on this thing. Like this thing is a turnkey car. You turn the key and you go. It's hitting on Techno Toy, uh, coilover suspension, sway bar, modified subframe, racing beat rear end. The car drives amazing. It handles great with the Falcon tires. Those things grip. I mean, you can take this thing to the mountain and drive it extremely hard in this thing. It's like a go-kart. Uh, yeah, the next plan for this is work on the body, work on the engine bay, clean everything really nice, make everything look uh, really good, and then probably sell it after that. She starts every time. Uh, it doesn't drain the battery. I can let it sit here for weeks and go on and start her back up and she starts. It. This car is amazing, it's never been, it's never let me down. It's gonna be my 1981 Toyota Starlet. A lot of people call it KP61 because it's the chassis code. Like I said, it's a 1981 and it's sitting on uh, Technotoy tuning coilovers in the front and rear. It has the uh, camera plates. Uh, let's see, it has 13 inch by 70 offset SSR's MK2s. It has 13 inch by eight negative 22 offset SSR's MK2 in the back as well. Sitting on universal uh, flare kit. It has Downstar uh, fender flares hardware. The license plate light brackets that go here, I did find them and I have them. I don't know what I did with them. I do have the Toyota Starlet batch here. I have that as well that I need to install. The tail lights took me a while to find because the, when this car went to get painted, a box of hardware went missing and the tail lights, the side markers front and back were missing. The Fender mirrors went missing, the lights on the, on the uh, real license plate went missing, a lot of it went missing. And this one was donated by a buddy of mine, uh, Zuni guy, which he owns a couple of KPs, him and his wife, and he had this spare one, and I was like, man, I don't care if they're broken or not, I need something instead of having a hole there. So thank you so much, brother, for hooking it up. These Fender mirrors were donated by Alpha Garage. He owns a KP61 as well, a dark gray one, and it looks excellent. Uh, and he found out that I, one of my boxes went missing, so he sent me this mirror. So thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. These ones are actually Honda Civic seats that a buddy of mine ended up putting on his Starlet, and I ended up buying this from him. Um, do I want to change these seats? I, I don't know. I, I like it. They're not the most comfortable seats, but they look, they look great, and I love the Starlet logo on it. The problem with this is that when you sit in here, the seats is so high, and there's nothing you can do. You are literally touching 
your legs with the steering wheel. And the Toyota steering wheel is huge, and everybody goes for a smaller one, which makes sense. But I really love the little, I really love this steering wheel, and I don't want to get rid of it. Because I added an MSD box to this thing, an ignition MSD system, the, the stock RPM uh, gauge stopped working, so I needed to get an aftermarket one to route it to the MSD because that one no longer works once you do that. So that's why I have this here, not because I need it, I don't. This thing still has the stock engine. Other than that, we ended up installing two cup holders here, which they're super glued to the AC vent that this thing doesn't have. I do want to do that. I've been talking to my wife that the next thing I'm ordering for this car is going to be the carpet. I want to put some the ending in the whole floor and I want the carpet to be installed. Because that's one of those things that I do want to do to this thing. So this is the engine bay. This is actually an S2000 aftermarket radiator that I ended up buying for this car because I didn't want it to overheat at all, which it wasn't before. I don't know why I went so massive so big. Recently did a tune up on this. I changed the oil in all the cars before we moved here to, to the new house. And everything on this thing is dialed up. Everything is perfect. Uh, we ended up going with a Weber 3236 carburetor on it. And it's the perfect combination for this car. This car can go in the freeway. It can do 80. It can do 90. It drives smooth. This, uh, this happened to be the 1.3 liter engine. It's the biggest engine that the Starlet came with. They came with a 1.1, 1.2, and a 1.3. They also came 4-speed or 5-speed. This happens to be the 5-speed manual transmission. So this is literally the best that you can get out there right now. Uh, they are extremely rare. There's not that many on the road. They are rear wheel drive. The Toyota Tercel is what replaced the Starless because of fuel economy. So by putting everything front wheel drive, it makes everything easier and you can get more MPGs out of it. That's why Toyota ran away from the Toyota Starless in the United States. This was the last one. Let's start her up. That pump is loud, huh? She starts right up every time. Never had an issue with this car. Even though it sounds kind of funky, she rides and runs very good. She needs to warm up. She's still kind of cold. Next stop is gonna be my 2011 Ford Raptor and what a truck. It's fairly stock. I do have the Afro wheels on by SVT and they work amazing. The Wrangler tires are superb. Got the 6.2 liter V8. I uh, did put a 52 inch light bar on top. We have another 22 in the front and I have four four inches that I want to add two more in the front and two more in the back. Uh, the grill is different. I did change this. This is a uh, Gen 2 Raptor grill which I ended up modifying to fit this one. It also has NFAB uh, front plate and bumper, towing mirrors, as you can say. I do do towing with this truck. This is the one that helps me take the car from point A to point B in the trailer. Um, it's a little bit beat up, but other than that, this thing works amazing. I did end up doing an update of 2020 Raptor suspension. It works better. The travel on it is way better, it's superb. And it is way cheaper to buy 2020 Raptor suspension than the original or getting this one's rebuilt. Other than that, the inside, it's, it's pretty much a, it's just like a Ford F-150. The non-Raptor, other than this one comes with navigation with the Raptor logo SVT. It says Raptor on the seats. It comes with the sunroof. Uh, let's see, this Raptor SVT toggle switches for the auxiliary, this is all uh, it comes with the truck. This is part of the SVT. So there's actually one. This is two. Uh, and the good thing about Raptor is this that these auxiliary wires are under the hood in the right corner. And all you gotta do is put your light to the power uh, harness, and that's it. And you just ground it. And it's already set up to this. There's no relays. Everything is already relay infused for you, and the wires are just waiting for you to use them. There's fire auxiliary cables there to use. Uh, some of the mods that I want to do to this one, it does have an aftermarket intake. I did a full tune up on this, all 16 spark plugs. All for, I mean, the whole nine was done. I do want to get a carbon fiber steering wheel for this. Uh, different shifter that has a little bit of carbon fiber. And other than that, that is it. I love this truck the way it is. I don't want to do anything to it. I think the stock exhaust sounds, sounds beefy enough. It sounds great. It does have the Sony's uh, system, so it comes with a subwoofer down there. There's plenty, plenty of space in the rack. The crew cab is, there's plenty of space here. 
This is some of the stuff I carry in the back when it comes to towing. It's gonna be cargo straps, cargo net. I have motor mounts and transmission mounts uh, that I have to put in this truck. Not that it needs it, but it's uh, part of the tune-ups that I do to cars when I buy them. Uh, like I said, it has a Sony system which sounds amazing. The rear center window is electronically, so by a push of a button, it slides, uh, slides to the side. We also have a cargo uh, stick, a bar that holds everything together. And other than that, everything is pretty much the same. This thing already comes super equipped. It is probably the best truck slash SUV that I've ever owned. And I don't think I can ever, ever buy anything other than a Raptor from now on. Up next, we have my 1982 VW pickup. All right, so what can I say about my truck? This thing is my little beater. I bought this thing about six years ago, probably. But about six years ago, and when I bought it, it had BMW E30 wheels. Um, it was a little bit higher. Uh, by a little bit, I mean a lot higher. And it was all, the outside was so jacked up. I mean, the body itself was pretty decent. It was pretty straight. I uh, haven't done any body work, and it just had very minor stuff on it. So the, the body, for being a... A pickup like this is really, really straight. So that's good. Some of the bad things about it that it's got rust here and it was like that when I bought it. It doesn't really bother me because even when it rains, water doesn't get in there. So I'm fine with it. Uh, I wish it had the glass that twists here, which I've seen a few VW pickups that have it and the sliding one in the back, uh, but it doesn't. So it's really hard to get air inside when you're in the freeway. It's, it's on coilovers in the front and the back because it's got leaf springs and it's a front wheel drive pickup truck. I ended up making my own uh, drop plate. The tailgate is here, which this is really hard to find on pickups that are still in one, in, uh, in one piece. The coke doors I did myself. Uh, this car's been painted once before matte black again because the front end had different colors. Uh, European bumper, which is destroyed now from all the being that I've done on it. It's got a European lip at the bottom. These are uh, MK2 GTI seats that I ended up just dropping in there and putting just a Coke shirt. This used to have a big Coca-Cola shifter, but I ended up taking that off. It actually broke off. And then I ended up using a spare wrench. Is that a 5 8 Nobody uses a 5 8 And then a socket that nobody uses either. What is this? 15 16 Nobody uses that. Push start button and switches. And then the uh, Indiglo gauges from Auto Meter, the Cobalt ones. In the engine, but there's nothing special about this. This was a car that I should just use every day. It was my daily for a long time, and it, I beat the living crap out of this truck. We've been, it's been to Home Depot and back many times. Uh, I, we've been to a lot of European car gatherings and car shows. But the under the hood is literally completely, completely stock. It has a new battery, new alternator, and everything else is literally stuck. I replaced the fuel pump just because I wanted to, not because I needed to. The new fuel filter just because I wanted to. New spark plugs and wire, like I said, just because I wanted to. It really didn't need it. And then I always put, when I buy a, a VW, I always put a new uh, coolant reservoir. No issues, no problem. It starts every time. It's one of the, one of the most reliable cars that I have here. Just a bigger truck. Up next is going to be the 1994 Mazda Miata. So you guys can see this is just your regular old 1994 Mazda Miata NA. And we chose the 1994 because the 1994, a lot of them came with the Torsen LSD rear end, which this one does. You can do some really cool donuts with this thing. Uh, the paint, obviously, is the original one is faded, so that needs to be taken care of. We got the four-point roll cage on this one. The shift boot is out because we actually ordered one, and it should be here in the next couple of days. The stock deck still in there because the wife does not want to get rid of the tape deck. She's very old school like that. It has a Momo steering wheel on this. And we ended up adding the gauges on the side that was not seen from the outside world. Uh, this thing does have a four channel amp in the, in the trunk of the car and has aftermarket stickers on, uh, speakers on it, not stickers. And this was her daily driver for many, I wanna say she daily drove this thing for like two years straight. She was driving this thing nonstop. Uh, it's, it's her first project car with, with me and actually her second project car. She used to have another Miata that she ended up turboing many years ago. And this is her first rotary project car. And yes, you heard that right, rotary. This thing has a, yeah, that thing's about to fall off. 
It has a rotary engine on it. It has a 1991 Mazda RX-7 engine on it, which we ended up adding, uh, switching to a carburetor because we really didn't want to mess with the old ECU and fuel injectors and stuff like that. We wanted something simple. She loves the way the carburetor sounded because it's pretty much the same setup that my Datsun 510 has, and she wanted the same exact setup, so that's what we ended up getting her. Uh, other than that, it's got aftermarket brakes and brake pads all the way around, which is your normal upgrade. It has some 15 by 7 zero offsets. Uh, wheels in here. Everything else is pretty much normal stock on the outside. Nothing really gives out that it's a rotary car other than when you hear it. And this was our first project because the first Miata, oh, let's just enjoy this real quick. The first Miata that we did for her, it was obviously the stock 1.6 liter engine, which we ended up turboing. And I actually ended up doing all the work for that car and this time she wanted to be all hands on. So she did the coilovers in this car. She installed the roll cage on this. It has a brand new top. The convertible top is brand new on it. Uh, the engine was done in our house, at the old house. It was one of those uh, husband and wife project and this thing turned out to be excellent. The first Tesla was from the house to Rotocon in Las Vegas. This is a full rebuild, it has a big street port done. Everything, everything is brand new from here back. Everything is a full replacement engine. We also ended up going with the uh, GSL SE distributor on it. It uh, just makes it a lot easier for tuning and timing whenever you're messing with uh, carburetors. This is a Holley 650 from Racing B. This is a carburetor that's been taken apart and rebuilt by Racing B for this specific application. For the big street port, for everything we have inside, they actually tune it beforehand and built it specifically for it. And when you put it in the car, it's literally a turnkey. As soon as you turn the key, the thing starts right up and you don't have to mess with it at all. And I have two of those carburetors in some of my cars. The radiator is completely, still the stock one from Mazda, from the Mazda Miata. And it's been modified. Uh, we did end up keeping the heater core in this car. So that's why you see all these lines going back to the heater core. And which you see right there. Uh, and the heater works excellent in this car, which is another reason why I haven't replaced the radiator. At the very beginning of this swap, before we rebuilt the motor, we ended up, we had a lot of issues with it. So I ended up putting a switch here, and what it does, it gives me some light, so at nighttime, we can kind of see what's going on without having to have a flashlight in our hands while we're trying to mess with the car. So the switch works very well. We ended up getting like a purplish, pinkish one. And at car shows, this thing, it looks really amazing with all the color the cap uh, label ended up being missing so i ended up making that myself in my computer and printing it and it matches the rest of the bill this is from uh this a coolant reservoir bottle which is already scratching i need to repaint that i really like the way it is so let's start her up It's gonna be my 2003 Mazda Miata, and this is for the guys that are new to the channel that haven't seen this car. This guy's been in the channel pretty recently. Uh, I used this car to teach you guys how to clean the engine bay, teach you how to do fluorescent paint. I also show in the channel how to do, how to turn pretty much a Miata to a Miata car. Some of the things that you guys haven't seen, it's gonna be this exhaust. I ended up doing that exhaust. I ended up adding this wing to it. And that's it uh, that I've added since this thing's been in the channel. 
This is a Miata that we ended up getting from a family member for extremely cheap just because it had rear end damage. Uh, and then we just decided to turn into a, a Miata car. This was a running Miata until the incident that happened earlier. Uh, some of the damage that I discovered is that the roll cage broke. The welds came off right here. Uh, what else? The, you can see damage from here. The AC condition got pushed up. This is the radiator that's completely broken off and ended up hitting the crank pulley. And now it doesn't start and my prediction is that the, yes, the, the crankshaft is done and it is not reading timing anymore. I'm assuming the timing chain probably or the timing belt probably skipped a tooth of two and it's just the last, the, it does not start. Uh, so I think this thing is done. I'm not gonna rebuild the, this engine. If, if I do something, we're gonna end up doing an engine swap on it. Uh, other than that, the car's pretty much stuck. It even still has the cruise control on it. The AC unit works, the heater works, like everything is complete in this thing. It's a stock uh, Miata car. And it's actually a SE. It's a special edition that came out in 03 with the purple paint and the six-speed transmission. It also came with the, all the silver, uh, bits and the white gauges and all this bow system and all of that still works. Uh, the battery got relocated from the side to the center in the back. Uh, universal tail lights that work excellent. Uh, turning signals included. It's got coilovers and it's got camber arms. Uh, a arms right here so because the camera on this thing was completely off before. This is a CO2 bottle that's connected to a perch valve here that it goes all the way up, where is it? Right here, and what it does, it's just it throws like a little smoky, smoky line up in the air. It's just for show, there's nothing really to it. It is equipped with aux beam Afro lights. It's, we got two four inches, two of them are spotlight, and the other two are flood. And then we have the combination of the two on top with a 22 inch bar light that has spot and flood combined inside of it. And this thing lights up the whole front of the car to include more. Uh, in the back for reverse light, we ended up using another two more flat lights, four inches, that are attached to the reverse light wiring. Uh, it has an LSD in the back as well because I put that to a test. It's got a vertex steering wheel. When you look at this thing from the side, it kind of, when I did the spoiler, kind of like a Formula One car, kind of. So I kind of wanted to keep the theme going. And I ended up adding the splitter in the front uh, so I can kind of keep the angle on it. I think it turned out pretty good. All right guys, there you guys have it. You guys asked for it. I showed you guys my car, what I've done so far. And then hopefully in the future we can do a video too and I'll give you updates what I've done to them. Uh, one thing I want you guys to do, I want you guys to pick two cars out of all the cars you guys saw today. I want you guys to pick the one that you would daily drive and the one that you would drive on weekend. And let me know in the comment below which ones would those two be? My, I'll tell you what I'll pick. My daily driver will be my cappuccino and my weekend driver will be my R8, which is what I'm currently doing now. I guess it depends on the event that I'm going to, depends which car I'm taking, but as of right now, those are the two cars that I'm gonna pick. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know it was a little bit different and this is probably gonna be a pretty long video and I hope you guys stick to the end. Uh, please let me know in the comment below what you guys think. We also in the description, we are gonna link uh, some of the videos that I talked about earlier during the uh, car showing. And then yeah, let me know if you guys want another video like this one. You guys have a good one. Thank you for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one.